Assalamu alaikum everyone, Ramadan Mubarak, even though it's almost already over, subhanAllah. If you've been here for a while, you know that I'm currently studying at an Islamic school. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of insight on what that's like during Ramadan. It's definitely different than the Ramadans I spent during college. I always try to keep it as authentic and real with you guys as possible. So we'll be going through what a typical day in the life looks like. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight to it. I don't want to be awake right now. Al Jannata la yana mutalibuha. The seeker of Jannah does not sleep. I always say that in Ramadan it's okay to be a little sleep deprived because your nights should be lively, right? If you're gonna stay up late, do something productive, read some Quran, and then also try to wake up early before suhoor and to get your tahajjud in. So the name of the game for suhood is to just get as many calories down as I can. I don't care how it looks or how it tastes. I just need to eat as much food as I can right now. Usually what we'll do is a bowl of oatmeal just because it's good carbs and it lasts you for a while. And then leftovers from yesterday's of thud, uh, good protein and it's free, which is great. And then obviously a ton of water to hydrate. And that's pretty much it. So suhood can definitely be difficult to get in, but it is sunnah and is important for your body. So if you can, at least put some dates beside your bed and some water, and you can have your suhoor that way. After that, I'll pray my two rakahs of fajr sunnah, and then off to the masjid for the actual fajr salah. I think one of the most important takeaways from Ramadan is to continue those habits that we were able to build inside of Ramadan. So after this month, one of my goals is to keep praying fajr at the masjid, inshallah, and Aisha as well, since we were already going for Tarawih. And then our classes start an hour after Fajr, so there's no point in going back home. A lot of us will just stay on campus and just read some Quran before class. It's a good way to start your day and it fits pretty neatly in our schedule anyways. So classes start at 7.30 in the morning, which can be pretty intense, but alhamdulillah, it's good. Uh, I get a lot of people telling me, you know, Mu'adh, you're so lucky to be able to study the deen during Ramadan. And alhamdulillah, as much of a blessing as it is, I feel like you can make the most out of Ramadan in any situation. I, again, I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys. I think last year was the most impactful, most spiritual Ramadan that I had. Even though it was my last year of university, I had finals and a lot on my plate. So it really is just what you make of your situation. But anyways, at this point in the day, everyone is really feeling out Ramadan, hunger and thirst. And so we'll kind of rest up for a bit and then we'll have one or two more classes. Um, if I can, between classes, I'll also edit some of my vlogs. By the way, the Philistine vlog is up right now. Make sure to watch it after this video, inshallah. And that's pretty much it for the day. 7.30 to 1 p.m. We're in class. So we are done with class for the day. I am absolutely exhausted. Uh, starting class right after Fajid takes a lot out of you. And so usually when I get home, I'll take about a two hour nap just to kind of refresh a bit. And then after that, I kind of just do whatever I need to do, whether it's editing videos, reading Quran, catching up on homework, um, whatever kind of just needs to get done. But that's enough for me. I am going to go to sleep. Two hours later. That nap was very much needed. <laughs> but that is enough rest. It is time to get to work now. Obviously, take care of your body is important. But it's little done, you know. Push yourself a little bit. It's okay to be a little bit sleep deprived. <laughs> so I have about three hours until Maghrib. What I'll usually do is just pray Asid and then the rest of the time goes towards work. Whatever I have to do. Obviously, reading Quran because again, it's Ramadan and then getting homework done or editing videos. Um, just dedicate that time for that. So yeah, let's get to work. So one really cool resource or tool that I've been using a lot this Ramadan is this app called Tarti. There's a lot of different features on here, but the one that I love and use the most is, you know, sometimes you think of a verse, um, but you don't, you don't remember the entire verse or you don't remember which surah it, it's from. So let's say I remember the beginning of this verse, but I don't remember the rest of it. So I'll just recite what I know. And look at that, it tells me that it's Surah Al Ahzab, verse number 23. And it shows the whole verse with the translation, and you can pull it up in the actual Mus'haf as well. And for transparency's sake, because you know I like to keep it real with you guys, um, this is sponsored, but 
I've been using Tortil for months, way before they reached out to me. So I was excited when they wanted to do a collab because it's just very natural. I've already been using it. I don't have to fake anything. I just tell you guys exactly what I use the app for. And so if you're interested, I'll have a link down below where you can download the app for free, inshallah. But with that being said, let's get right back to work. <laughs> وقولهم قلوبنا غلف بل طبع الله عليها بكفرهم فلا يؤمنون إلا قليلا وبكفرهم وقولهم على مريم بهتانا عظيما وقولهم إنا قتلنا المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وما قتلوه وما صلبوه ولكن شبه لهم الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب الله أكبر Because you never won in the battlefield because you had the bigger sword You never won in the battlefield because you had more weapons you didn't win in the battlefield because you had more numbers. For the first time in Islamic history, the Muslims outnumbered the enemy. In the Battle of Hunayn, 12,000 Muslims, 4,000 of the enemy. You had the numbers. And what happened? You became deluded, overconfident. And then it felt like the earth was shrinking around you. You never won because of your numbers. You didn't win because you had more weapons. You didn't win because of any of this. You won because you had Allah on your side. You had Allah on your side. So we just finished Tarawih and we're back home now. It's already 11.30, almost midnight, but I'll usually stay up for a little bit more and just get more work done, read more Quran. It's honestly, it's, it's, it's a lot of just the same thing, but that's what you want in Ramadan. You don't want to be doing multiple different things. You want to really just lock in on your ibadah, prayers, your tahajjud, your fasting, your Quran, all these kind of things you want to just increase in. So that's why in Ramadan, I don't really go to the gym, I don't I don't work on videos too much, all that kind of stuff, just because you do want to focus on your ibadah more. But yeah, I'll do that until I kind of get tired and then sleep for a couple hours and then wake up for fajr again and repeat the process. Yeah. All right, I'm going to wrap up the rest of the night and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من فارجع البصر هل 